Okay, I, I had to plug it in because it's it's almost dying. Um, I don't know where I was at, but I'm going to edit it all together. So, listen, uh, Paul's in a care facility. Stuff's not going well. We don't have any legal rights, so we got to try to do our due diligence to make sure that he's getting taken care of. I love Paul very much. Please keep my family and Paul in prayers. Pray for God's justice and for every bit of the darkness to be exposed, okay? That's all I'm asking for, for the truth to come out. Because I know what's going on, and I know God's already setting it up, but the more that the saints pray, the better it's going to be, okay? Um, but that's what we're up here doing. We ended up going to lunch, and there was a guy that was there at the lunch that this woman came in she had a shirt on that said pray the guy looked really familiar but come to find out he's involved he's like a pastor a children's pastor at that church and it was it's the only like bigger church that i've ever been to that was really healthy i mean it was like oh man they were big man they were like almost like ccv big right like it was a big church probably they are now that big too but they're having healings and stuff during services like all kinds of stuff we they had a little a board saying like what was going down at this church right and they're like yeah somebody got healed from this and this and this all this stuff and it's a good church man like the night before i went to this church like when we were here the last time i met the pastor in the spirit the night before and he invited me to the church 120 percent like god is my witness that that happened i met him we were in a classroom and uh he was talking to me and he was like hey come check out my church and these are the classrooms that i saw and he he was another the lord told me this was a church of officers okay so he was one of the officers at this church I met him. He's like, yeah, come on through. So anyways, we ended up at this church the next day and come to find out like the head pastor at the church was the dude I met in the spirit the night before, right? That invited me to come to the church. And it was one of the churches. There was like three of them countrywide that like God was like, good job, you know? And it was super encouraging, man. I actually went in there and he like stopped and prophesied like a couple healing things right i didn't get healed when it happened but he he called it out he's like somebody's dealing with like some ear thing or what i was i had an ear thing at that time like it cleared up i put some medicine on it within like a week or so but i mean he called it out he got the word right it was maybe just a confirmation or something i don't know how that works whatever but that happened right and there is healings and stuff that go on in this church so we go to this Hawaiian thing when we go pick up, um, we go pick up uh, Paul today, right? We go to this Hawaiian restaurant and this lady walks in and she's got the, the, the shirt on that says pray. I heard her, her husband were sitting there and we ended up talking and come to find out they're from Phoenix. They're like, they grew up r right there, like right around the corner. And she just like offered to like help with, Paul and Paul's not being he's being neglected they lock him in a house all day they make him go to bed at five o'clock and stay in bed until night like eight and nine in the morning the next day it's really bad what's happening right now guys we're we're, we're uh, like he's he's wasting away in this place and his son doesn't care he goes and visits him like once every couple months like that's it like and I live in Phoenix and I don't have any any say anything like that I don't want anything from him I don't want money I don't want anything like that I just love him you know like I want to make sure he's taken care of it's really sad this is what's happening we're having to deal with some stuff um you know we're, we have to go we, we got to deal with some stuff so that's where I'm at right so we had an emotional day today and like I met these people there and they were super nice really willing to help and everything else they like really genuinely like wanted to help they were just like yeah we like we didn't even say anything the lady just like said it you know and they're spirit filled you can tell they're they're totally holy spirit filled and the lord took me to philemon 
just a little bit ago. And he had me in it. And he says, but without your consent, I wanted to do nothing. That your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. If you've ever seen the movie Office Space, okay? Jennifer, uh, oh gosh, what is her name? Jennifer, whatever. Aniston, okay? Jennifer Aniston works at Sh Schlotchkeys or whatever they call it, right? It's like Applebee's or something. And she just like goes to work. She's just trying to work, right? She's just like, she, it's not her career. She doesn't, she doesn't love working there or whatever. And the manager's always like on her butt and he's like, hey, how you doing? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. So uh, we, we got to talk, you know? And then he like pulls her aside. He's like, I noticed she only got 12 pieces of flair. She's like, well, well what? Like, what do you mean? Like, oh yeah, I guess I do. What? And she's like, well, you know, uh, it's uh, company policy that we have, uh, you know, f 13 pieces of flair, whatever the name was, you know, number was. 13 pieces of flair that we wear 13 pieces of flair uh okay do you, do you do you want me to go put on more flair uh no no that's that's not not the case right he's like yeah i i want you to want to wear the flair right and she's just like okay so i'll go put on no see that's not it like i want you to want this is the issue here right and it's funny because, like, she she was just going to work, man. She didn't want to do it. She didn't want to have to wear pieces of flair. You know, the Nazis wore pieces of flair. <laughs> she didn't want to wear pieces of flair because somebody made her do it, you know. And she's just trying to do her job. So the So this is what Paul is talking about, right? We should have to, we should want to help, not because we're, it's compulsory, but that, like, we're led, that we want to do that, right? But I got to tell you guys, like, on the real, here's the other side of this, right? I stood out there and talked to that dude for, like, an hour today, and he was a really nice guy. He was genuinely nice. They were trying to do, they were trying to be nice, doing nice people things, I can see right through stuff though, man. Like I I see right through it. Like when I'm talking to him, just having a normal conversation, I'm making him uncomfortable. And I prayed on it and I came home and I was like, Lord, why why is this? Why does there feel like there's like a like a disconnect? This used to happen with my best friend all the time, right? And we would talk, like he he promised me he would come and help when my son was born. And then when it was a compulsory thing, right? He didn't want to be around me or whatever it was, right? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't want to, he didn't want to have a conversation because it's like, I don't know why, man. And I'm having it with this guy and I'm making jokes and the jokes were, were funny. They're funny jokes, right? They're like, my jokes are hilarious. I mean, that's why most people watch my content. They're like enough with the religious stuff, like more of the humor, right? Like, let's do that. My jokes are funny, man. I, I'm i sarcastic sometimes, but it's always for a point. Like, and God's okay with that. Like, like he's okay with that. And, and I'm okay with that. Like, it, what it feels like, man, is like the Borg. And it's like, have you ever seen like Invasion of the Body Snatchers where they're all walking around and then like, if one of them wasn't one of these body snatched people, they would like, ah! like that, right? Like they would, they would screech. They'd be able to identify that person like right away. And I feel like these characteristics that are here that make people uncomfortable in me, there's not, this was the Homer Simpson thing that I put on when Homer called out Ned Flanders. He said, why Ned? Are you so worried about, cause humans are human. Cause they hate things sometimes. Yeah. Guess what? God hates stuff too. Like God hates stuff too. Like he does. He hates stuff, right? People have this idea and this image of what God is, but it doesn't actually convey to who he actually is. I had a woman the other day come after me because, and she didn't know anything of scripture. She, she knew a, enough of scripture to get her in trouble, but not enough to actually back it up. And I made her look stupid for like 
just and the lord told me to let her have it like he's like i want you to let her have it right because most of the time he makes me bite my tongue and sit down and sit on my hands and pray and you know and he gave me the green light i was like oh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna light her up and this is what i did i made her look stupid like you look stupid because of this 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 and this 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 and this you don't know god this is what's going on right i love you but don't come out and critique me she said you shouldn't yell at people. It was when I called them fools, right? For for not confessing Jesus Christ in front of people, for being ashamed of 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 me because I talk about Jesus. God told me to do that video. And you're going to sit here and try to pick me apart on here, right? So you you don't really know God. You're just the Borg. You're like like a cookie cutter version of what you think think god wants you to be instead of just being you and letting him work out the kinks okay if those people today and and, and maybe this is an irrational fear or maybe it's a real fear but if those people today that i talk to if they saw my content that that i talk about hard issues right that aren't always nice like it being truthful is very hard to be nice and be truthful like you can't it's 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 almost impossible to do both most of the time you just have to shut up because telling the truth is not nice but i refuse to do that the lord gave me an option like three days ago i saw a jordan peterson video and jordan peterson said stop and pray right now and you just ask, he's like, if you want to know if prayer is real, you just do this. You stop and you pray and you say, what is something that I could do and would do that if I stopped doing would immediately change my life for the better? And I said, oh, okay, this will be fun. I stopped and I prayed and immediately I got an answer. He said, he said, stop doing the Ned Flanders videos. And I was like, wait, what? And then I weighed my options and I sat there and I saw like, I saw it like that, that video got 200 and something views on my, on my channel. Right. I'm not taking that down for nobody. Like nobody is ever going to get me to take that down. I'm going to go out like Giles Corey, more weight. That's who I am. I like Homer Simpson. I think he's hilarious. I think he pointed out every single flaw and used a mirror to show what phony fake people are within Christianity to themselves. And Ned Flanders is a mirror to prove a point that this is what we're dealing with. These are the type of people that we're dealing with. They're trying to be Ned Flanders, super Christian 2.0, instead of being a human and allowing Jesus Christ to, to, to take the credit for his awesome perfection. It's that easy. But the Lord gave me that to set a standard. And, and after we went through this, like this exchange, this conversation where he said, yeah, you could, you, you know, you could give up that Ned Flanders video. And I got like offended and irritated at first. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm never going to do that. And, and, and then like, we get through this whole thing. And then I was kind of mad at him. I'm like, are you really asking me to give this up? Like, Lord, why would you do that? Like, you know that this is me. Like, why? Why would you do that? And after we get through the entire thing, he says to me, that's what I wanted you to say. So, like, he took me through this test where he said, yeah, you could do this. Your life will get a whole bunch easier. You get a bunch of these religious Pharisees and they get off your back. And, and, and you'd probably have friends, Noah, and, and you'd probably have, have people that would be in your corner, uh, even when, when, when you're up or when you're down, right? But people don't want to be in your corner when you're down, when you tell them they're wrong. They, it, it's hard being the bad guy. It's hard having to, having to, to take a hard line stance when my father's being neglected and abused in a nursing home. But he doesn't want to get out of there because he, he's got it made up in his mind that he's not going to have enough money to survive for the rest of his life. When I told him, Paul, you don't ever have to worry about that. My wife, I'll, I'll go work 
two jobs if I have to, and I'll pay for you to be in whatever care facility you need to be in. And I'll do that until the day you die. And I don't expect a dime for it because my, my provision comes from God, you know? And I said, Paul, you need to get off these drugs. I looked at his med list and I said, you're taking trazodone. You shouldn't be on that. You shouldn't be on this stuff. You're failing to thrive, right? And he got pissed at me because I told him these things. Then he said, you, you think you're a, like a super Christian 2.0 or whatever. I said, no, I don't. The guy at the, the place like attacked me, right? That, that Ray guy that runs his little group home got pissed because I started sniffing around in the places they don't want me to see. So he like threatened me, came after me, started raising his voice in front of my children, my, my two-year-old and 10-month-old and kid, okay? This happened. Last night, this happened. We had to call the police on these people to do a, a, an adult welfare check, like all kinds of stuff, right? This is what I'm going through. And they hate me because I, his son hates me because he's a greedy SOB who wants dad's money. And his dad hates me because I'm trying to force him to get off the medication he doesn't want to get off of because it's killing him. And I'm trying to get him into a better place to live so that he'll thrive, so that he can have the things that he wants so much to be able to go out and play in the park with his grandkids again, right? And, and, and live again instead of these evil SOBs that are in this place just sticking them in a room for 15 hours a day, making them go to bed at 5.30 at night, drugging them up, sending them to China. That's what they call it, is sending them to China. This is what I'm dealing with. But when you tell people the truth and you tell them the hard stuff, they want nice People want nice. They don't want truth. There's a prophet today, Courtney, uh, uh, a fresh word, right? She gets on there and she dances. Or she's like the, the greatest passive aggressive prophet I've ever met in my life. She'll give a prophecy and it's an accurate word because I know what it's I know the Lord's saying it. He's telling me the same thing. But she'll dance around everything to never really make a hard line stance on anything. So then she doesn't have to lose people, position, power. Instead of just saying Halloween's evil, she says, sit there and, and let the Holy Spirit convict you about this day and blah, blah, blah. And what, what, maybe there's something in your life that he doesn't want you to do. Instead of saying, hey, if you go do Halloween tonight, it's evil. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself because God's not in that, right? Like I do. I don't, I don't expect her to be a clone of me, but say what you mean and mean what you say. Because when you get to stand in front of the Lord, this is who he is. He's not going to be nice to you to save the truth from you. That's not God. That's not how he is. He tells you the truth and it's hard and he's there. He loves you. And he's always there, but it's God's way. It's dad's way. And you come sit on dad's lap and you better humble yourself and listen to what he has to say. People think that this is not humility. People think that this is haughty. This is what I got accused of being is haughty. This isn't haughty. This isn't, this is humility saying it's God's way or no way at all. This is the truth, but people don't want the truth. Right. So this is what I go through on a daily basis. The Lord was moving on me to make this video. There's a reason I'm making it. I don't know why. But I want it out there because it's got to be documented. Right. Like so, like what we've gone through. Right. God bless you guys. I hope you have a, a good day. These people in these churches that are doing Halloween, like, they're going to be cut down soon. It's going to be so bad. He hasn't even told me I can say what's going to happen yet, but he said his people actually know what's going to come. So you probably know what I'm talking about. They're dumb trying to save them from doing this stuff. God bless you guys. Have a good day.